Hi, Colleen. Uh, good afternoon. How are you doing today? Fine. How are you? Uh, pretty good, thanks. Uh, thanks for appearing on Brainwaves today. Um, yeah. Yeah, my pleasure. I'm happy to be here. Okay, good. So um, you are a uh, an associate professor of psychiatry at uh, University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine, and an award-winning uh, neuroscientist. Um, so you must have a you know a deep interest in learning about the brain and how it works and how to help people with brain diseases. Um, how, how did you get started in in this uh, this career path? Yeah, so I've always been very interested in uh, in science and medicine um, since I was very young. And uh, I was lucky enough to do um, research when I was an undergraduate and really just fell in love with research in general and then sort of discovered neuroscience um, when I was in graduate school and just thought the brain was, was probably the most fascinating thing you could ever study and uh, just even how it works normally and then how it could uh, go wrong in so many ways um, to, uh, to cause these really devastating diseases. Uh, so it was. It's really been a, a, a fun career path to be on. Well, that's great. Uh, yeah, neuroscience is just a fascinating thing, I think, too. Um, so, uh, so now, now with your your rising star award that you've won through uh, Imro and Johnson and Johnson, uh, your proposal is to um, look into. Um, uh, well, we've already discovered this. That being uh, that there seems to be a gene in the brains of the mice that you've studied, that when it's mutated in a certain way can lead to symptoms of mania as akin to what people experience in bipolar disorder. C can you tell us a bit about how that, that works, please? Yeah, so we, um, we found that uh, a gene that's involved in uh, the control of circadian rhythm, so your body's 24-hour clock that controls your sleep-wake cycle, um, appetite rhythms, rhythms and hormones, body temperature, all of this. Um, if you mutate this gene in the brain, um, or actually it's, it's mutated in the whole mouth, um, this uh, leads to a phenotype which is very similar to uh, bipolar patients, specifically in the manic state. And so these mice are very hyperactive. They have uh, greater risk-taking behavior. Um, they have lowered levels of depression-related behavior. Uh, anything rewarding, like drugs of abuse, sugar, Anything like this, they find more rewarding. And if we give them uh, the mood-stabilizing drug lithium, uh, which is still commonly used in, in uh, patients, this brings them back to normal and makes them more like normal mice. So this is really a very nice model uh, and a very complete and descri well-described model of human mania. Well, that, that's pretty exciting. I mean, you've discovered something you can, uh, like a, an animal model that you can use to research ways to... Um, develop new therapies for mania. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so these mice are really um, very useful because we can use them um, to screen new drugs and new therapies mm -hmm. that we think might be um, a better treatment for, uh, for mania and for bipolar disorder in general. That's awesome. So uh, one of the things you want to do in your experiments for the Rising Star Award is to um, look at suppressing yet a, a different gene from the one that you just talked about in order to help re thera re therapeutically remedy these, these manic symptoms the mice experience. Um, so what, what is that gene and, and how would this process work? Yeah, so we wanted to um, look at something that might be able to counteract the effect of having this mutated uh, clock protein. And clock is a, a protein that regulates the expression of a number of other genes um, by directly binding to DNA and activating expression of genes. And so we wanted to find something that could kind of go upstream from that and maybe activate the genes that are necessary for proper brain function, even when the clock gene is disrupted. And what we found was that uh, there's a set of proteins called histone deacetylases, or HDACs. And what these HDACs normally do is sort of uh, repress gene expression by keeping um, DNA wound around these uh, proteins called histones. And when they're very tightly wound around these histones, then the genes cannot be expressed. However, if you inhibit the protein, these proteins, these HDAC proteins, this allows these genes to sort of open up and, uh, and be regulated and be expressed. And so... We knew that there were a number of, of genes um, whose expression was 
was very um, strongly down-regulated in the mice where clock is, is mutated. So without clock, these genes were not able to be expressed. But we can inhibit these HDAC proteins and then allow these genes to be expressed even when the clock is mutated. And then that brings these mice back to normal, similar to lithium treatment. And so we think this is a really, um, uh, a really great way of being able to, um, to counteract uh, the manic phenotype of these mice. Or in a person, it would be you know, trying to counteract the manic behavior of a person who might have a genetic mutation that led to that, um, that bipolar disorder and bipolar mania in the first place. That's awesome. I mean, that, that, that's a possible first step toward a development of a, an original therapy that, um, that could treat bipolar disorder better than, than current therapies for people. Um, what, so once, uh, so you're, you're, you've taken it a step, but there's a little ways to go to actually develop the therapy. Um, that could take some time, obviously, to get it through the FDA and you know, some, some, perhaps some years to get it through the FDA. But, uh, yeah. but on the bright side, you know, what would be the, the better effects of this therapy potentially and, and, and such? What, why, did, why would it be better? Yeah, so potentially um, this therapy, uh, if we target these um, proteins and we target them in a very specific way, we may be able to develop a drug that has less side effects than some of the current therapies. So lithium and valproic acid and some of the drugs that are, are currently used to treat bipolar disorder um, can often be really um, effective in people, but they, um, they also often lead to a lot of side effects. And so the idea behind our proposal was that um, we wanted to really hone in on a very specific um, either um, one protein or maybe a small set of proteins that we could, um, we could target where um, if we inhibited only this, then we wouldn't have such dramatic side effects um, that would uh, happen, which you see with the current therapies that are out there. That makes sense. Uh, the, the more specific the therapy is, the, the less side effects you get and the, um, uh, the less people suffer as a result of the side effects. So that's, that's fantastic, yeah. So, um, well, great. Uh, that that's pretty much covers it for now. I'm sure people have some questions for you online. Uh, are you ready to take some questions when people post them? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, thanks, Colleen. Uh, I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, thank you. All right, take care. All right. Bye-bye.